Spanish Inquisition. In the early years of the 16th century, to combat the rising tide of religious unorthodoxy... We're actually gonna hold off on that for a second. Today we're talking about Isabella of Castile, and by we, I mean me, because pluralis modestiae makes you feel more inclined to believe me. Oh, who am I kidding? It's the majestic plural and we all know it. 1460-something, Castile's in a bit of a pickle. King Enrique IV, Isabella's half-brother, is like 40 and stuck with one daughter and the nickname The Impotent. This is not very good for stability, and the nobles want a little more power for themselves, so they try to put his half-brother Alfonso in charge. And so Alfonso marries Enrique's daughter Joanna, i.e. his niece, and he gets to be heir to Castile. Hooray! Now, if only there was some way to ensure that Enrique bites the dust sooner rather than later, and Alfonso's dead. Great. And the nobles say, bro, what? Did you poison him? What? No. All right, Isabella, you want to tag in for the rebellion? What are you kidding me? Isabella, being the model of a modern major Eleanor, and naturally skilled in negotiations, makes a deal with Enrique. She gets to be the heir, and they both have to agree on a husband when she gets married. Which, to be honest, is kind of a plus for her as well, since Henry had been trying to marry her off since she was six. First to this guy, but it didn't work because she was also offered to his brother, who got arrested for conspiracy, then to Henry's brother-in-law Portugal, then to this guy, who died on his way to meet her, then he tried this guy and this guy, so with this she'd finally be able to catch a break. Except then Enrique tried to marry her to his brother-in-law again, then this guy, and finally she said, Look, I'm gonna marry this guy, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. And Henry was like, Are you kidding me? That's literally the first guy I told you to marry. Yeah, when I was six. Of course, they were second cousins, but it's okay, because they got permission from the Pope, who had been dead for five years. Alfonso of Portugal, however, was not very happy with this decision. See, a lot of people thought that maybe Joanna should have been in charge, since she was actually Henry's child and there was gonna be a woman in charge anyway, so he married her and invaded Castile. And by the way, different Alfonso, still her uncle. No half-siblingry this time, no possibly another fathering, plain and simple, totally her uncle. But Castile won! Sort of. They won half of an important battle, told everyone it was a huge success, and support for Joanna died down. Captain Portugal gave up on conquering inland Iberia, but only because he had secured the entire ocean, meaning unlimited pepper and the ability to turn world history into a collection of Portuguese crossover episodes. Put a pin in that for a second because it's gonna become really important. Now, Isabella, and Ferdinand, I guess, did a lot of things right. There's a reason why Spain has one Isabella that everyone's heard of and a whole bunch of Enriques that people haven't. Actually, there's another Isabella, I won't say you haven't heard of her because someone will correct me, but again, not as famous. Enrique Quattro was a big spender, but not particularly swell at spending in the right places. Crime was out the wazoo in Castile, the only semblance of law and order coming from hooded vigilantes and local nobility, and when people are more supportive of local nobility than the actual monarchy, well, that's how you end up with warring states. To avoid this, she created an actual police force. A little brutal, to be sure, but arguably better than virtual anarchy. Paying for this was a bit of a trick, seeing as she was spending quite a bit buying back all the land Enrique had sold for dirt cheap back in the day, but eventually she sold that back and earned a little extra on the side by shutting down Spain's overabundance of mints and stopping inflation, an important lesson that nobody would ever forget about, Charles. On the flip side, there were a lot of ways they earned money by doing things... Less right. Ferdinand and Isabella finally finished the Reconquista, spending 10 years reconquering the Moorish lands of Granada, no harm, no foul. But now they had all these Muslims and Jews in their kingdoms, and that, that just wouldn't do. They decided to be a little more lenient than the Almohads with their convert or be killed laws, and implemented a convert or get the hell out of our country but don't take any of your valuables with you, and yes, that means going by foot, leave your horses behind law. Now, you might expect that a lot of people would cross their hearts and hope to die that they were really, really, truly Catholic and go through with the baptisms and the masses and the communions, but not really believe any of it. But Isabella and Ferdinand and realized this and created a League of Catholics dedicated to sniffing out the truth using whatever diabolical means necessary. Not realizing, of course, that people tend to tell you whatever you want to hear when you put them on the rack. They also went after Protestants, witches, sodomy, though there were only about 500 cases in total and most had to do with coerced pedophilia rather than homosexuality, and eventually Freemasonry. However, they did manage to get a lot of money out of the whole ordeal and get on the church's good side, so they were ready to spend on things like, oh, I don't know, a certain ill-calculated voyage to the East Indies? Take that pin out of the Portugal deal because it's time to talk about the Mariner everybody loves to hate. Istanbul was Istanbul, not Constantinople, so the Silk Road was nobody's business but the Turks, and now the Portuguese had control over the ocean surrounding the coastlines of Africa and Asia, meaning the only way east was west. So they threw some of their extra cash at Columbus, and he brought back slaves, tobacco, and the door to a literal mountain of silver that has yet to be exhausted to this day. And Spain went from being a couple dinky little kingdoms in Iberia to the biggest, baddest superpower in the world for about a hundred years. Unfortunately, they decimated the population of the New World and crashed the global economy, but nobody's perfect. <laughs> Fun fact about the Inquisition, it didn't die with Isabella, it kept going until 1834. Yeah, Andrew Jackson was in his second term when people stopped getting inquisited. Crazy talk. Anyway, I've got old videos on the screen, you can subscribe for more, leave suggestions if you want, but I should warn you, I recorded all the episodes for this summer ahead of time. Toodles!